Hey guys, how's it going? It's another from the K Realty Group of Roller Page. Hope you have, uh, we hope you guys are having a great day so far. And uh, thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're in October 2018. That means we're actually reviewing the uh, Toronto uh, Real Estate uh, Board stats for the month of September. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna put these uh, stats up on the screen, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, welcome back again uh, to another month installment of our uh, review of the monthly stats. Uh, we're in October, so we're reviewing September, guys. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, we do this every single month and we're reviewing um, the average GTA price point across the entire uh, TREB, which uh, you know includes a lot of communities, including Durham, Peel Region, York Region, and the City of Toronto. In addition, guys, we're reviewing certain uh, micro markets and we're re reviewing also certain uh, housing types, such as detached homes, uh, semi-detached towns, and condominiums. We're looking at the price points from this year compared to last year and that gives a bit of indication of what we're going in the marketplace and also some takeaways uh, from the months of September and things that we should be looking out uh, for into the future. Uh, so I uh, would encourage you guys to actually subscribe to us here on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash real property help. You can follow us on social media guys we put different content on there as well uh, similar stuff but also a little bit different and uh, you're going to find us in most channels at King Realty TO that would be at Instagram on um, Twitter and also on Facebook.com uh, slash King Realty TO. Uh, so let's get started, guys. We're going to talk about this uh, month's sats, and uh, we're going to put up the numbers on the screen right now, and here we go. So as we see, guys, we see that the average price point in the GTA today is 796786 That's actually up 2.9% from last year, September, uh, which is great. That means that we are, do have movement in the right direction. Uh, if we look at detached homes, I know that we've had uh, positives in the last uh, few months, uh, but we're noticing that for detached homes, we're actually a little bit lower this month. So we have them at sorry, 1,008,361, and it's actually down point. 6%. Now that's less than a percentage point, guys, so it's not a huge deal. And we also remember we're coming off of a, of a summer month in September, generally, and uh, sorry, July, August, and September. Sometimes we do have lower sales, and um, you know, price points obviously for detached homes are a lot higher, so that's why we're affected. Now, moving on, guys, uh, look, let's take a look at semi detaches. Uh, we see semi detaches here at 792,353. That's up 5.3%. Uh, we have townhomes at 634,314, up 4.1%. And we also have condos, guys, at 570,140, and that's up 10%. So uh, we noticed that at least the uh, more high density property types, such as condos, townhouses, and semis, are a little bit higher in price. Well, sorry, the price points are going up a little higher, and that's because that's the most in those are most in demand housing types, right? Entry level uh, up to a certain price point, majority of people are looking for those type of homes. Um, you know, although the uh, average price point uh, for a detached homes in the million doesn't mean that we have a bunch of million dollar buyers out there. Uh, those properties do move a little bit slower. Okay, so let's take a look at our sales, guys. I'm going to put that up on the screen right now. You're going to see there are sales at our 6,455. That's actually up 1.9% from last uh, year, which is great. It just means that this year, guys, we have a little bit more buyer confidence and we have people in the marketplace actually making purchase orders uh, and they're actually fulfilling those purchases and they're moving into homes. So that's great news, guys. That's, that shows that we're having a little bit more in sales. And uh, for the months of September, although we do have about 6,500 sales, uh, that's actually on average pretty well in line with other September's in the past, as long as we omit uh, 2017 and 2016, which were a bit of anomalies in the marketplace if you look at a 10-year chart. And you can actually Google that, guys. I would encourage you to take a look at the last 10-year sales, the last 10-year average uh, price points as well. And you're going to see that we have a pretty nice linear um, if we cut a line right through all the ups and downs, that's it's pretty linear as well. And uh, yeah, we do have a, you know, a good investment here in the GTA when it comes to buying property. And people do have confidence that over time it is a good investment and it will go up. And a lot of people are reaping those rewards now that they're selling homes after living in them for 20, 30 years. Uh, they're definitely uh, cashing out and uh, in some cases, you know, they're downsizing and keeping some of that cash and doing what they want to do. OK, guys, perfect. So wanted to give you that information. And now we're going to move on to the months of inventory. Again, months of inventory, guys, give us as an indication of whether we're in a seller market or a buyer market. I break these down into micro markets because I can't give you a whole GTA month on inventory. I can give you that number, but it's not going to relate to a lot of you guys because everyone lives in a different place and every region has a different uh, scenario. Something's going on differently in each one of them. And so that's why I break it down. So let's put this up on the screen and let's start with Toronto. 
So we see here, guys, that Toronto, we have uh, 2.36 months of inventory. I've been getting used to seeing this at two or less, but uh, still we're considered in a seller's market when we're at two. Uh, reminder that we're from, we're from one, uh, zero months on inventory up to about four months of inventory we're in a seller's market. And from four to six, we're more so balanced. And if you have more than six months of inventory in a market, uh, that means we're likely in a buyer region okay, or a buyer's market as well. Now, I included another detail in here, guys. I'll put this back up. Uh, we have 42% uh, sales uh, to active listings. And that's another uh, way of taking a look at buyer uh, versus seller market. And in this case, it also indicates that we are in a seller market as well. So let's take a look, guys, at uh, Durham. You see the Durham, guys, we have it at 2.8 months of inventory. And uh, that is 36% sales to um, active listings as well. Very similar to Peel region, we have it at 2.7 months of inventory. And that's at 37 sales to active listings. And the other one uh, that we've noticed over the last few months, if you've been watching this video, is that the York region, it's obviously north of um, Highway 7, north of uh, 407, out in those areas, Marco Marora, Vaughn, Maple, etc. We have high price points in those uh, communities, but you know we're actually crossing over into more of a buyer market in that play in that area, and uh, it's been kind of like that for the last year and a half or so. And so, if you notice the numbers, let's look at the screen again. We're seeing here that in York Region we have 5.5 months of inventory, and it's about 18 sales to active listings which means that we're getting real close to a buyer's market. And in some scenarios, that is what's going on. Likely when you go out there, you can negotiate prices a lot lower than the listing prices and you can haggle with these uh, sellers because they might have a lot of competition and there's not a lot of buyers that are going for these houses. So they got to may maybe make a little bit more concessions than uh, other regions would. I know in hot pockets in Toronto, there's bidding wars and uh, you know what? The seller is in, in control for sure. Okay. Uh, so that's it guys. That's uh, the stat part of this video But we're also going to take a look at a little bit more information about what's going on in the marketplace Just a few takeaways and uh, things that we're indicating uh, so earlier I mentioned about uh, housing and uh, higher density housing types and the fact that their growth in price is a little bit more more than other uh, types of properties and this makes sense because there are lower price points it's more in demand and uh, what we got to be looking out for, guys, in the next few months is the municipal elections and uh, what some of these mayoral ca candidates are going to do in terms of their housing plan. Obviously, real estate is always a hot topic. And so people try to put in some plans in there to, I don't know, I guess, help the people who live in the city of Toronto, obviously. And uh, we got to kind of see what they want to do here. I think in a lot of cases, they may not have too much of an impact because the masses really speak more than a, a couple of people. However, they may uh, try to implement some policies uh, related to housing. And so we just got to look at that. I think more so they're trying to look at attacking, not attacking, but improving the supply because it's really going to help us. Right now we have a little bit of a lack of supply. We have a lot of demand. I don't think we've ever had an issue with demand. It's mostly supply. And because supply is lacking, that's why condos are going up and they have been for the last few months and years, uh, despite you know the housing policies put in by the wind government, uh, condominiums have still been really resilient to all that sort of stuff. And uh, the reason is because they're entry level and I think that there's a lot of demand at those price points, that 500, 600, 700 thousand dollar price point, and it's pushing up the demand. Those properties are becoming, you know, they are increasing in price a little bit more, fa a little faster than other housing types and it's because of the entry level. So we're gonna see maybe the housing, um, sorry, the um, mayoral candidates probably give some housing policies related to supply, I would imagine. And so that's something to really look out for. The other thing guys is that uh, the banks and lenders have been predicting that the Bank of Canada is going to increase interest rates. Uh, the next two uh, decisions that they make are going to be on October 24th, which is coming up and also on December 5th. They're indicating that because of a few things. Obviously, we've uh, just agreed to a NAFTA after a while of maybe not being in that deal. Eventually, we're in it. I don't know the details of that particular agreement, but at the end of the day, it's it's a uh, kind of stimulated our economy and so to kind of back us down and, and stay keep us on track and so we're not overinflated Bank of Canada increases interest rates so we'd stop spending right and so that might affect the uh, actual interest rate on mortgages uh, but we're gonna have to see exactly what the effect is once those days come um, in at the end of the day I would, I'll tell you this for the average uh, buyer uh, if you're doing the right thing and you're going to get your pre-approval and you have everything in line you probably won't be affected it will affect those certain buyers that are kind of on that uh, cusp of uh, almost being able to afford it, not being able to afford it, might kind of push them out. Uh, that is very possible, but I think that's a very small percentage of the buyers out there. Most people are actually really ready. They got their pre-approval, they got their down payment, they have great jobs, have great credit, and uh, those are some of the variables that uh, banks and lenders look for when it comes to approval. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna just uh, remind you guys once again, you can follow us here, subscribe on YouTube to get some of this content. You can follow us at King Realty TO on Instagram, Twitter, or you can uh, actually check us out on uh, Facebook as well, facebook.com slash King Realty TO for all this insightful information. I got a lot of stuff for buyers. I got a lot of stuff for sellers. 
Uh, I got a lot of unique stuff about uh, different communities as well. So definitely follow us on those channels uh, so we can get connected. And if you haven't got connected with us, please follow us, guys. We'd love it. We'd like to hear feedback on what you think about these videos, and we'd like to make improvements all the time. You have a great day. Danilo from the Kim Realty Group. Talk to you soon. Bye now.